How's it going, everybody? Johnny Styles here with the Wellness Observer Live, powered by Bad Dude CO. Visit baddudeco.com for all your supplement needs and Liquid Sunrays, liquidsunrays.com for the very best competition tanning in the entire bodybuilding and fitness world. We are also going to be having Liquid Sunrays at the 2022 Olympia. So if you haven't booked with LSR, Go check them out. Visit their website. They're going to be right there in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the video that a lot of people wanted to see. And, of course, I was going to cover it because she's technically, you know, top four in the world, if you want to call it that, according to last year's Mr. Well, Miss Wellness Olympia. I'm going to be talking about none other than my very good friend from Puerto Rico, our island, Yarishna Ayala. And you guys already know my story with her, and um, it's a long one. It's a long one, but I nonetheless I have to talk about her and the entire um, lineup of this, you know, at least the girls that participated in the 2021 Olympia. So that's what I'm counting down the days. After her, I'm going to be having Angela Borges. I'm going to be having Isa Pereira. And, of course, the world reigning champ, Francia Limados. What I'm doing is I'm reacting to their routines from the from last year's show, and I'm you know critiquing them, and just I haven't watched these videos in a while, so it's good to revisit because they can only get better as they go on and on with time. With Yarishna, it's different because her story is that even before she was in the fitness world, she was used to the stage. So the stage for her has always been her friend instead of her enemy. Some girls get nervous while she actually feeds off the energy from the people and of the actual stage. She used to sing with her twin sister. So, hey, it's all online. You can check it out. I'm not talking BS here. Um, to start off, we got to talk about, you know, a lot of people are asking me, you know, what happened two years ago when the category was brand new in America. And we were talking about, you know, when I was doing videos about the class and, you know, and instructing people, like giving them knowledge of what's to come. Many people thought Yorishina was going to be the quote standard for the class. And by by that time, I can tell you guys that, you know, she looked very good. Remember, I did an interview with her before she went came back to the IFBB Pro League. Um, she left the league, and I have her own video saying that she wasn't going to leave, but then eventually she ended up leaving for the WBFF. She ended up winning her pro card right there in the first try, and then, of course, you know, the wellness division came back, well, came back, actually started in the NPC FB Pro League, and then I had to go do an interview where basically she had to explain herself, not only to me, to the fans, and to the league, and she had to go back to the NPC world, and she has to requalify to an AFB Pro card, which she ended up doing, and this is kind of how she was looking two years ago. So two years ago, she was looking phenomenal. Even though, you know, her glutes were not super full and round, she still was a very good look. What happened was that a lot of people didn't even know or haven't seen or didn't know anything about half of the girls that were already training and competing in wellness in other federations. Many people didn't even know about Francia Limados, okay? Isa Pereira, Giselle Machado, all these girls. Like, people only kind of gravitated towards Yarishna because that was like the girl that was, you know, posting a lot and she was all over social media. But this look right here could have been, you know, the big, the big standard. Coming into the Olympia last year, many people in the crowd, many people in the press pit, um, they were talking about her being the actual, you know, the, the heir apparent, the, the queen of the of the wellness class, which we will talk about the, the queen nickname in a little bit. But, you know, she ended up failing to deliver at the Olympia. And many people thought that was her chance to actually deliver and win the show, which did not happen. So two years ago, we were actually talking about her being the standard. She was not the standard anymore because Francielli Matos came in and a lot of other girls, including her arch nemesis, um, Angela Borges came in and, you know, she also got beaten by Angela. 
So Jarishna has been in Las Vegas, Nevada for the past month. This picture that I just posted earlier, this picture was taken, I believe, November 1st. And um, she was doing a photo shoot for this company, for the bag company. I think this is a wolf pack. And um, she looked a little fuller than we're used to. But as I mentioned in other videos before, she is one of those girls that I've seen change dramatically in time. I remember back in her Puerto Rico days, you know, if she had to eat plain egg whites and plain tilapia and asparagus, that is exactly what she was going to do in order to get in shape. So she has changed dramatically. She has said that she moved to Vegas almost a month prior to the show to acclimate herself, which I really don't understand what that means. Like the world champ just got into town like seven, seven or eight days before the show. What does that mean, acclimate to town? Um, she's been training with somebody um, that's, I, I don't know this person, but he's she's been training with a guy named Andy Velch. I, I believe that's his name. I, I hope I'm not murdering his name because I really don't know how it's called. So this is Andy right here. Um, he's in Iron Therapy Fitness. Certified Neofit Practitioner for all of those you of you guys that don't know what, what that is. It's in the machine that um, you've seen people training and they have some type of wires that, you know, it, it emits, I believe, some 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 type of shock to the system. He he this is right here. This is one of these machines right here that you see, you know, people training legs. And it's, it's supposed to help you out immensely with your workouts. Now, for the past month. Andy seems to be the one helping Jarishna out for her workouts. He's the one that's been pushing her for the past month. And it's interesting because Andy right here, I don't know if you guys can see it on screen, Andy tags what's supposed to be her coach, which is this guy right here, which we all know that, you know, it's it's with her, with her in every picture. And what happens is that I don't understand – What's the deal here? He still needs to work on his biceps, though. His biceps are very, very flat. But I don't know what's the deal here because a lot of people have been asking me who's Jarishna's coach. At the moment, at the moment, I don't know, three weeks ago, um, a very famous uh, coach that we all know and we've seen bring girls to the stage, Mr. Kim Odo, had posted a certain pictures about good luck to the athletes. And I'm covering all this because you guys have asked him so many questions about it. And it's true. It seems to me that Kimoto for this year's Olympia has Angela Borges and has Yarishna Ayala. So what happens is that Yarishna is not tagging Kimoto in her you know, in all her workouts or her stories. She's not saying that he, he's coaching her. I don't know if this is something that you hire a coach for the past four, for for the last four weeks of the show, which I know some coaches do. There are some coaches that actually prep you for that last seven or ten days just to dial you in. I have no idea. There's a misunderstanding here on who's her coach, who's her nutritionist, who's her. I don't know. You know. So this is what we've seen online. I believe Kim Odo is supposed to be working with her, and I don't know. You know, Andy was helping her with the workouts, and I don't know, I don't know what else is going to happen with that. Um, and another note, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of you have asked me what's going to happen with her, her nickname. I don't know in reality what's going to happen with her nickname. Her nickname is the Queen, and I believe if you're, if you're the Queen of something, you should be number one in the world. But you know, if it was for me, I would appreciate myself calling me the champ instead of the queen, let's like, say, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna be playing um, a segment here from her routine in the 2021 Olympia. And I want you guys to watch it and I want you guys to go on with me and you know react to it. And I will explain to you a little bit after the video how she looks now and the whole conditioning game aspect of it. So here we have Yarishna on stage. As you can see, this was, I'm going to pause it right here before we go on. This was on Friday. Remember, the Olympia is two days, Friday and Saturday. And Friday, when she came in to the Olympia, she came in, her tan wasn't very good. She was, she didn't have oil. 
and she was very pale. And also, she was not dialed in. But all of that did change 24 hours later. Okay, so we see her doing her hands up. This is her model walk. One, two, three, four. Very confident. Here's when you can see that her waist is not that tiny. When she starts walking little by little, and you can see that her waist is not. You know, he covers her with the hands, and then when she lets it go, you can tell that it's it's not what you see on Instagram. From the side, very good. She doesn't have the lines, but in posing wise, that's a perfect shot for her. That is a very very good shot for her. And I remember seeing this live and just thinking to myself. Wow, she does look good. She does look good, but she's not looking as sharp as we've seen her before. Um, she's not smiling as as much as she does. Great calves. She does have great calves. Very sensual hair flip pose, the whole winking. But when she turned from the back, this was not the iteration that we're used to seeing. And right now, she has not shown a lot of her back poses. Maybe this is why. You know she wants to keep it keep it tight and, and covered because she wants to maybe show people wrong or you know before we keep moving forward hashtag prove me wrong so coming back to the olympia video she does the back pose and i remember the crowd was a little bit confused by then you know the little switch in pose and she walks one two three, great walk this is one of the best walks in the whole league and then she does the same back pose at the end see she switches and goes right back and just, you know, the whole walking thing for her. She can walk in these heels day and night, and she can basically, you know, just walk in her sleep because she's that good. But her conditioning wasn't on point. So speaking of conditioning, that's something we're going to talk about in a second. Again, I want you guys to look at her presentation one more time. This is originally what I wanted to show you guys and react to it. If she comes in with this same style of posing, I'm not sure if it's going to be something groundbreaking. Why? Because we've seen this before. You don't want to come up with something that you do over and over again. You want to try to evolve and you want to try to do your posing routines and always add a little something to it because those people that follow you, the fans, the judges want more and more from the very best. So I really like her walking here. Her body wasn't, you know, 100%. But any girl, again, that's watching this video can go back and re-watch this great routine and learn from it. Because a lot of girls, believe it or not, a lot of girls are great at um, posing by themselves. And when it comes back to walking, they walk terrible. And you've, you've seen some of the girls that I've posted here that, it is not very good. It's not very the, the walking, the whole jumpiness thing, that is not very good, especially at the best, biggest stage of them all, the Olympia. Now, we're going to be talking about something that, you know, moving forward, she has been posting videos. Believe it or not, she still has me blocked everywhere, and, you know, I still see everything. So I asked you guys what was the, the response when you guys saw these pictures of her when she's like here doing this um, bicep curl, believe it or not, and she's like her her delts are crazy. Her she's very vascular. Her abs are tight, which we'll talk about in a second. And I asked you guys for the upper body: is this a good look for wellness? And you know, you guys voted all six hundred eighty something of you voted. And you guys talked about the truth. That's that's basically your truth of you guys that follow me here. I'm putting this on screen. You guys said it's 62% said it's not a good look. And 38% said it's a good look. So the thing with this picture is that when she, you know, gets the bar up, you see her with the bar down right now, right? And three, two, one, it switches up. And the abs down, down here kind of disappear a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time so you guys can realize that I'm not kidding. I haven't touched this picture at all. It's a real picture from her. You go into the abs and you can see the perfect lines, you know, the obliques, everything. And then when it changes up and she lifts the bar up, it's a little bit gone. That happens when, you know, photo can be retouched. That's happening, you know, when you have extremely high definition pictures. There's, there's details in some of the pictures that are very, very freaky in a good way, I guess, if you're going to call it conditioning. 
she has you know spinal erectors for a wellness chick for her to have spinal erectors like this is ridiculous completely ridiculous I've, I've, crazy you know you got to give it you know credit where credit is due she is must be busting her ass literally to get in this type of conditioning now is this the best shape of conditioning for wellness i personally don't think so if you give me a girl that has a great lower body that's shredded that's probably more acceptable than have your upper body super shredded and then be shredded all over or the upper body be shredded and then the lower body be as not shredded. You get my drift. So many people have asked me, are all these pictures Photoshop? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not all of them are Photoshop, but they are done by a professional camera. And when you do that, you can actually, you know, you can actually take a picture and just probably correct some colors, some shadows, all that. Trust me, I do this for a living. I know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you haven't seen like four months ago when she did the Arnold, um, Kenny KO, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's a YouTuber also involved in the fitness world. And he also does all of the videos that, you know, are you natural or are you, you know, enhanced? And I remember Kenny doing a video on Yarishna. Basically, he was talking about um, her Arnold classic pictures, which were not good. Okay, and um, I remember when she was posting videos and pictures pre-Olympia, pre-Arnold, she looked amazing. Okay, and that is something that is something that she always always been done. Like her hype pictures and her hype videos have been absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so I remember then people thought that she was not going to be in shape. She probably is in shape. She probably is in real good shape. What happens is the days before the Olympia, something does happen. I don't know if she takes some Lasix fish. I don't know if something happens and her body just doesn't respond. It could be the nerves, although she doesn't look like she's nervous when she gets on stage. So I'm going to play a snippet of Kenny KO's video so you guys can, you know, share it with me, share your thoughts. And he completely, completely explains what happens prior to her posting, you know, these great freaking pictures. And again, this is not only her. This is people that are in the industry. This is many people do this. It's just she, she, she does it so bluntly sometimes that it's very obvious for YouTubers to pick her apart. But let's watch it right now and see what Kenny has to say. So here on the left. Of course, we have what this individual would post on their social media, on their Instagram page, on probably their OnlyFans. You know, who knows where they're going to be posting this content, right? But at the moment, Eurasia doesn't have an OnlyFans at the moment. Crazy big difference. Now, I understand the photo on the right here is a little bit blurrier, but this is an actual stage shot. So when we're comparing the left to the right, the Instagram to the actual stage shot, you're going to see a ton more vascularity, a ton more striations, way more lines, muscle separation. If she looked like this on show day, which obviously was not possible because this is taken and touched up so incredibly much. And we're going to talk about also angles, lighting, everything there. But if she showed up like this, she would have easily won the show. But she showed up. I have no idea, but in my opinion, she wouldn't have won the show, but she probably would have placed second. Or maybe third so that's that's my take on it she showed up like this now the thing is with instagram photos is every single influencer or person out there is going to try and make themselves look so much more jacked and chiseled than they already are now i'm not trying to single out this yarishna i don't know who she is i've never met her um and i'm not trying to single her out because literally every single influencer does the same exact thing they're going to post under the most optimal lighting with a the pump. They're going to touch it up. They're probably going to go into Facetune, make more detail. They're going to change the structure and the definition. They're going to apply filters. They're going to do everything they can to make themselves look and stand out compared to everyone else that is out there on social media. Now so that is very true. And that's why social media is such a powerful tool. Because when you have judges looking at you and looking at your social media, they're going to remember that picture. They're going to remember, oh, my God, this girl looks crazy. Have you seen this picture? All the fans, all competitors are going to share this picture. Oh, that's why as a 
as a competitor, you always put out there your very best. Now, it's very different than, for example, Francie Elimatos just posted a picture from her phone to just riding a bike under shitty lighting, under terrible lighting, and she still looks good. You see the difference? Now, I understand you wanted to do some quality, but when, when quality comes to abroad, and you can see it on social media, then more than likely there is always some type of way that the pictures are retouched. Now, the problem when that happens is they end up falling short. So this was the picture that was taken here on the right and in the comparison photo. It's pretty evident. And no one, I think vast majority of her following and the population out there isn't going to see it and they're not going to think twice about it. But posting this type of stuff on social media really just creates more body dysmorphia for people out there because a vast majority obviously not me and probably majority of you are going to know that this isn't how they actually look all the time. If at all, she, I don't even know she would ever actually be in this condition without any touch-ups. And there you go. I mean, that snippet from Kenny KO, you can follow him at his YouTube channel. He explained it, you know, in the best way possible. You have to, you know, as a competitor, as a, as a media person, as a, as a person, a public, you know, a public persona in the fitness and, and in industry world, you have to make yourself always look very good. But when you start comparing yourself in other pictures and then the stage photos come out, it's very different. It's very different. And that picture that he posted, I don't know, I'm going to post it again here now. This, my friends, is a night and day difference. Okay. So these pictures are going to come out and there's already people on Instagram calling people out for photoshops and there's ways of doing it and she's been one of them. So this has been my longest <laughs> um, re reaction video to a video from the posing routine of 2021. I had to ask, uh, you know, answer some of the questions that you guys had and some opinions and all that. And yes, you know, two years ago, she was right on the verge of being that standard role model for the wellness category. But again, two years ago, didn't, people didn't know half of the competitors that really, truly stand out. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for her to do battle. And we got to wait and see. We got to wait and see what's going to happen. Is she going to show up like this pictures that we saw on the gym? Is she going to show up? the most diced is that something the judges are looking for can she beat can she beat this girl can she beat that girl that's the real question as a as an honest person that you have to ask yourself if you know if you're going to the olympia with aspirations of winning the show then hey more power to you but being realistic sometimes helps the the, the outcome of the situation this has been Johnny Styles the Godfather of Wellness remember we're going to have videos every single day up the, until the Olympia. So tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and forward and forward and forward. Not only am I going to have the preview and I'm going to tell you who I think is going to win the show, who's going to play second, who's going to play third, maybe eighth, maybe nine, maybe 10, maybe 16th, maybe last place, which is 16. And um, we're going to be talking about that and I'm going to be bringing you more coverage from the Olympia as we move forward. Thank you so much for following the Wellness Observer Live. This has been the Godfather of Wellness, Johnny Styles, the one and only. Keep it locked to the Wellness Observer Live.